while I was taking a break, I was watching the ants, and I noticed it looked like two ants were fighting. So I watched them for a moment, and I realized it wasn't two ants fighting. It was a live ant carrying a dead ant around. So I was like, oh, it's probably going to cannibalize it or something. It's dead. But what the ant did was it went around this leaf several times. I'm not sure. Man, I wish I could see the ant corpse again. It's around here somewhere. But anyways, it went around this leaf a couple of times with the ant corpse. And then it delib very deliberately, like, placed the ant up on the leaf. The wind blew the dead ant down. And so the live ant went back around, picked up the dead ant, and put it back on top of the leaf. And then it ran around in circles a couple of times, and it wasn't that leaf. It's around here somewhere. But anyways, it ran around in circles a couple of times, I think, leaving a scent trail or something, and then it took off. But it was very deliberate about putting the ant up on the leaf. So... These animals and these insects, I mean, they're always exhibiting, like, clear signs of intelligence. Clear signs. And you can say, oh, like, you know, you're stoned, like, you're seeing intent where there is none. But, no, it was pretty deliberate about it. It was obvious. It wanted that dead ant up on the leaf. Another time that I was out here, you see how these, these tall... These tall pines all over the place, right? And these giant woodpeckers come out here, especially in the spring, as they migrate north. And I was walking along, and I heard a woodpecker. It was tip-tip-tapping away. And this isn't the tree, of course, but I was watching it carve a hole in a tree. And then I noticed, like, it had carved two holes below that one. The hole that it was carving, when I showed up, was a circle. The one below that was a triangle. Okay, like a pretty, pretty good triangle. Maybe better than one that I could carve. Like having very little carving experience. And then below that was a square. So, again, you could say, oh, like, I don't think I was stoned at that time. But it was pretty clear, and... It's not impossible that these birds recognize these patterns and start copying them. Like they see these shapes on signs and, you know, all over the place. Circles, squares, triangles. Yield signs, any kind of other sign, you know. These are shapes that we've placed all over the environment. So it's just not, not inconceivable these animals are beginning to copy them. There seems to be other examples, and you know, I'm not going to go all into it because I don't remember it all, but um, of primates and other creatures, like adapting these human methods and traits, like raccoons. They learn pretty quickly. Crows, crows also seem to use human, uh, human reasoning to a degree. So, if evolution worked the way it was supposed to, what that would result in, and who am I to say what it's supposed to work like, but that would result in a higher intelligence for everything, because the creatures that adapted to us would be the ones that would be successful. But unfortunately, you know, there are almost no long-term select, I mean, you can't predict what these long-term selective traits are gonna be because the human force is so overwhelming. I mean, it's no longer like a part of or contributing to evolution, so to speak. It's just destroying diversity. And no matter what you select for, the more intelligent you get, well, you're never going to catch up to the humans 
and there's you know 20 billion of them and there's only 500 of you left so no matter how intelligent you get no matter how well you adapt humans will continue to destroy these resources there's nothing even close to us that can really counter that except for bacteria and perhaps insects There's probably a couple of other examples I'm not thinking of. So maybe in the future, the ultimate intelligence will be insectoid. Only the cockroaches will survive, as they say, right? Good luck to us.